Astronauts are the brave men and women who risk their lives to go where no one has gone before. They are the cream of the crop, accomplished doctors, pilots and engineers who train for years to prepare for journeys out into Earth's orbit and beyond. When they get up there, many marvel at the power of seeing our pale blue dot from the outside, and we've been bombarded by stories of discovery, perseverance and bravery over the years. However, there are a lot of strange things NASA astronauts have experienced up there that have been overlooked or covered up entirely. Welcome back to Fact No Menal. Today, we're exploring eight shameful things NASA astronauts either don't talk about or haven't got much coverage. I just can't tell you how proud we all are of what you have done. For every American, this has to be the proudest day of our lives. Trash or aliens? When astronauts go up into Earth's orbit, they're basically heading into a garbage dump. There are millions of pieces of debris floating around our planet. Most of these pieces are pretty small. There's an estimated 330 million pieces that are less than one centimeter in diameter. But there are also some 3,000 abandoned spacecraft zooming around, and they don't zoom around slowly. The debris can travel as fast as 17,000 miles per hour. So astronauts must be careful with all that stuff zooming around. If you've seen the film Gravity, where George Clooney and Sandra Bullock deal with the devastating repercussions of being hit with a piece of space trash, then maybe you get the picture. But in 2006, just before he and his fellow astronauts were preparing to return to Earth on the space shuttle Atlantis, Commander Brent Jett spotted something weird. There were several shiny objects that had appeared to come together to form a triangle. Jet, an objectively great name for a pilot, by the way, noted that the object didn't appear to be solid, and they moved in ways that he'd never seen objects in orbit move. Was it just space junk, or did we have extraterrestrial visitors? Nazi NASA The Nazis were some of the worst humans in the history of our world. This is an unavoidable fact, but they did have some pretty smart scientists. Scientists who helped develop the V-2 rocket, the world's first long-range ballistic missile that wrecked havoc during World War II. And in the immediate aftermath of the war, the United States and NASA saw an opportunity. Why not recruit some of these smart Nazi engineers to come work on the American space program? We can probably ignore any potential war crimes they may or may not have committed as long as they can help build us some wicked rockets. So, Operation Paperclip was born. From 1945 to 1959, more than 1,600 former Nazi members were recruited by U.S. intelligence and brought to the United States to work as scientists, engineers, and technicians. The most prominent of these scientists was a guy named Werner von Braun. Von Braun came to the U.S. shortly after the German defeat in World War II. He went on to become the director of the Marshall Space Flight Center and was the chief architect of the Saturn rocket that helped take the Apollo 11 astronauts to the moon. He's since gone down as the father of space travel and was inducted into the National Academy of Engineering in 1975. But he was also a Nazi. After his death in 1977, investigators uncovered that he was a card-carrying member of the Nazi party and was at one point part of the SS, the Nazis' party mostly ruthless and war crime committing divisions. Gordo's UFOs Gordon Gordo Cooper was one of NASA's most accomplished astronauts. He took part in the Mercury Atlas 9 mission in 1963, becoming the first American to sleep in space and the last to complete a solo orbitable mission. In 1965, he became the first astronaut to complete two orbital flights as part of the Gemini 5 mission. But Cooper also had some pretty wild things to say about what he saw, both when he was up in space and during his time as a fighter pilot back on Earth. Throughout his career, he made several claims about UFO sightings and continually alleged that there was a government conspiracy to cover up evidence of UFOs. 
He even claimed that he took photographs of a particularly strange flying saucer while testing aircraft at Edwards Air Force Base in 1957. He was instructed to send the film directly to the Pentagon without developing the photos, but he had apparently snuck a peek at the negatives, which he claims were indisputable proof of an extraterrestrial aircraft. The photos were never seen again. Treasure maps from space? Gordon Cooper was a bit of an eccentric. He also liked to take photos of the Earth from space while in orbit and allegedly brought a secret camera issued to him by the Department of Defense to spot Soviet nuclear silos while he was orbiting the Earth as part of the Mercury 9 mission. Stuck in a small capsule orbiting the Earth, so small that NASA couldn't send anyone over six feet tall on the mission, Cooper ended up spotting over 100 anomalies under the sea, which he believed were shipwrecks. He ended up making a map of the sunken sites, a space-based treasure map, if you will. Cooper kept his treasure map a secret right up until he was on his deathbed, when he handed it off to a professional treasure hunter named Daryl Miklos. Using Cooper's map, Miklos and his exploratory team has so far found five sunken ships, proving that Cooper was both a prolific astronaut and, in a strange roundabout way, a prolific treasure hunter. Space Music in May of 1969, Apollo astronauts Thomas Stafford, John Young, and Eugene Kernan heard strange noises as they circled around the side of the moon. While it definitely wasn't Pink Floyd, the sounds still startled the astronauts on board the ship. It sounded like whistling, and it lasted for about an hour. The trio was so taken aback by the sounds that they have hesitated to transmit them back to NASA for fear that they would be laughed at and excluded from any potential future missions. They did end up replaying the transmission, and in the recording, Cernan is heard saying, you hear that? That whistling sound, and calling it outer space type music. Young responds later saying, we're going to have to find out about that. Nobody will believe us. A few months later, Michael Collins, pilot of the Apollo 11 mission that culminated in Neil Armstrong and company setting foot on the moon, also heard the space tune as he piloted their ship around the dark side of the moon. NASA scientists seem to have an explanation for their weird music, though, saying it was simply caused by radio interference. The Apollo 10 mission involved two ships, or modules, a command module and a lunar module that dropped lower towards the moon. The whistling seemed to be just a noise generated by the dueling radio signals between the two modules. And that music even sounds outer spacey, doesn't it? Do you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. Woo! Richard. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, outer space type music. No insurance. Blasting up into space is obviously not the safest job in the world. And it was so risky that life insurance proved to be super expensive. Astronauts during the 60s earned something around $17,000 a year, but a life insurance policy during that time would set you back about $50,000. Before Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins set off on their famous Apollo 11 mission and became the first men to walk on the moon, they had to figure out how to fund their own type of life insurance. They were already celebrities before ever setting foot on the moon, so they came up with a pretty creative solution. They'd sign a bunch of stuff and sell their autographs. During the month before their iconic mission, the astronauts were held in quarantine. During this time, they autographed hundreds of postcards and other memorabilia, in the hopes that if they didn't come back, their proceeds from the sales would go to their families. Fortunately, it never came to that. Space diapers? In 1961, Alan Shepard became the first American to launch into space. But while he was waiting to blast off, there were some delays, and he had to wait for several hours in the capsule. During the wait, he realized that NASA had made a significant oversight. How was he supposed to go to the bathroom? Mission Control eventually gave him permission to, well, turn his spacesuit into a wetsuit. And despite the uncomfortable launch, Shepard still made history. Since then, NASA has developed space diapers, more formally known as maximum absorbency garments. While ships do have a toilet, the space diapers provide astronauts with peace of mind during launch and landing, as well as during spacewalks, times where they, for sure, would have no options other than to relieve themselves on the spot. Relationship problems 
astronauts and adult diapers became headline news back on Earth in 2007, Lisa Nowak became the first astronaut to ever be arrested. She had been dating a fellow astronaut named Bill Offerline for three years when she found out that he was leaving her for another woman, an Air Force captain named Colleen Shipman. She found out where Shipman lived, disguised herself in a black wig and hat, packed a steel mallet, a buck knife, a BB weapon, latex gloves, duct tape, and garbage bags, and hit the road. She drove from Houston to Orlando without stopping, telling authorities later that she used adult diapers to make it happen. Noak ended up finding Shipman, but only managed to pepper spray her rival through the window of her car. Noak was arrested and charged with multiple high-level charges, but had them reduced and didn't end up serving any time in jail. What other interesting astronaut facts do you know? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe for more fact content.